our goal as we go through these study guides is um, if you're like me, you open up your Bible, your Bible case, and you've got all these handouts in there. And sometimes you're like, oh, I just wish I need, had a little study material. Or if someone's going, like you're like, hey, I'd like to learn on the fruits of the Spirit. Like, hey, I've got this study guide that we have already gone through it. You can use it to teach through. And, um, and with the new class time and the turnover between, we're going to try uh, getting you out a little quicker than in times past. So um, try to shorten the lesson down, but still cover everything so that uh, we can still get the material, but still get to where we need to be uh, for the other parts of the, the services for the day, uh, working in kids' classes or just the different ministries that uh, many of you are a part of. And um, with the equip class, we wanted to give you the material to equip you to help teach others. Um, I know that there's been times I've gone through a study guide myself uh, before my wife and I were married. We both had the same devotional we were going through, and uh, that way we could be on the same page when we talked. Um, I don't know if we actually did it, but we had it. But, uh, but uh, sometimes just a little extra material, then you see something, maybe you'll star, star a verse or something to go back to and study throughout the week. Or uh, Many times I've been reading through my Bible while looking at the verse that the preaching or the teaching was coming from, and I'll see something on the other page, and I'll write a note and be like, oh, I need to study this one out, or that's what I needed for today. So as you can see, we're starting a new series, um, Fruit Grows Where the Stream Flows. And uh, uh, Lynn, right? Cheryl. Yeah. Lynn. Lynn was telling me uh, kind of her name and what it means, and it kind of fits right in with this, so it was, it's pretty good. And um, but as as we go through this, this will be on the fruits of the spirit. And this lesson one is preparing the soil, and there'll be a two part on preparing the soil. Uh, and this one is who is the Holy Spirit? And uh, I know for me. Uh, going through some of these series, I've learned a lot when we did the Authority of the Believer that there's some things from that that just stuck with me and just changed my mind on how I thought on some things. And the Lord's uh, used that in a mighty way over the last year. And then as we start going through this, I'm sure I'm going to learn something. And, uh, and hopefully we can translate it to you with Brother Carlo and myself. And uh, so... Uh, just be in prayer for as we go through this and we'll go ahead and go to prayer and start this lesson this morning Heavenly Father we thank you for all that you're doing in our lives Lord we thank you for this new series we're starting and Lord we ask that you would just speak to us through your word that you would help us guide us and direct us in our actions and our our speech throughout this coming week and Lord I pray that you'd help us all uh, prepare the soil of our hearts and Lord that we be readily accept accepting of what you have for us and Lord, we just ask that you be with this lesson this morning, pray that you be with the teen class and pastor's class as they started up this morning as well. And Lord, we just ask that you work in a mighty way on the prop. We ask this in your precious and holy name. Amen. So in your study guide, in the first page is uh, the bulk of the text that we'll be going through. We're going to read it at different points in the lesson this morning. And um, as I was going through this, many times we think about gardening or growing something. And if you're like me, your thumb is not green and you put some seeds somewhere, you see something come up and then you forget about it. And then you come back later and nothing's there or uh, everything dies. My mom used to say she had a black thumb, but my grandmother, she could just like look at something and it was just amazing gardens and everything. But as we start thinking about fruit and where it grows in Matthew seven, verse 20, it says, wherefore by their fruits, ye shall know them. And many times we look at people and we see the outward appearance and we can see um, different aspects of their lives or we can be around different people. And as we get to know them, we can see different things that maybe God's blessed them with or maybe they're gifted in this area a little more. Uh, for me, I'm gifted at being quiet a lot of times and not talking to a lot of people. I don't know if that's really a gift. But then my youngest daughter, she can talk. And she will carry on conversations, and you ask, who are you talking to? And she's like, I'm just talking to myself. And I'm like, well, can you not talk out loud then? <laughs> but at least we know what she's thinking, because she's going to tell us. And uh, it's, when she's sick, uh, you can tell, and you're like, it's quiet. And uh, so as we see people, we can see the different fruits in their lives and the different things. And as we start looking at things, you ever gotten a package of seeds and read what it said on the back, like, this is how you grow this type of 
vegetable, this plant or whatever. And there's lots of things that go into it. There's the different types of soil, uh, the, how often you're supposed to water it. Maybe you're supposed to add nutrients. Uh, some plants are more sensitive to the sunlight than others. So some you're supposed to grow in shady areas. Temperature, like you have to grow this in this season, and this in that season, and just different things. So there's many different aspects that go into growing something. It's not just merely, I'm gonna throw a little water on it and it's gonna grow. I don't know if you ever tried to go grass and you just throw the seed out there and you read the instructions says rake up the yard and do all this stuff. You're like, man, I don't wanna do that. I just wanna throw it and walk away and have grass next week. <laughs> And then you water it and you find out how much the water bill is. And you're like, do you know what? Dirt's fine. And uh, so there's different things that go into it. And if we want to have a productive garden or have something flourish, we have to do some research and find out what it is that is going to make that flourish. And does it need to have other plants in the area to pollinate the fruit and just different things. And when's the right time to harvest it? And um, throughout the New Testament, we can see jesus teaching the disciples and we see him teaching in parables or allegories and um and i looked up a parable i was taught many years ago a parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning so it teaches us something how we can how we know something and relates it to something spiritual and then the allegory is some of those literature terms and um that show us basically in pictures to interpret the hidden meaning of something um using parables so um, when we start doing things, um, for me now at work, when I get a new employee, one of the things I, I like to do is I'll sit and talk with them, say, Hey, what's your experience level? What have you done? What have you done in the past? What have you worked on? And that way I can relate what we're doing to what they know. Be like, okay, so this is how you did it here. This is how we have to do it here now. And as we start studying the word of God and doing these things, we're going to see things that maybe we can understand it the way we think or we understand something and we can relate it to what's being taught. And we see that Jesus, when he taught the, the people and the disciples, he would relate what he was teaching them by what they already understood. We know that they, were, they, they knew farming and they knew um, herding and just different things like that. So in, in Mark chapter 4 and verse 3, it says, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow, and it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth. And immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched. And because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and thorns grew up and choked it and yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some thirty, some sixty, and some an hundred. And he said unto them, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And as you continue to read through these passages, you'll see that Jesus explains this to the disciples of what this lesson that he was teaching meant. And just as we're going to see here in a moment, the first point here, but as we receive the word of God, how are we going to let that grow? How are we going to let it grow in our lives? Are we going to have it fall where it's going to flourish or are we going to have it where something happens and we walk away and say, do you know what? This isn't for me. And oftentimes we'll see that when we're faced with a trial, it shows us our true character on um, where we, what we truly believe. Are we going to just go in with what's being said or are we going to stand our ground and say, do you know what? I know this to be right. This is what God's led me to do and this is where I'm going to stay. Even if it does uh, set me aside from everybody else, or maybe I don't get the, uh, the benefit of whatever it may be. Um, I know for me, for years, our company didn't supply much stuff, so how we had to require chairs or different things, you had to find stuff that wasn't being used otherwise and reappropriate it. And I, I, I always felt convicted. I was like, you know what, I'm not going to be a part of this. I'm not going to go do that. And, um, and others would go do that, but I was like, do you know what, if I have to steal something to have something, I don't need it. And um, a lot of times in our workplace or just in our everyday lives, we're going to be faced with decisions. Maybe we're at the grocery store and have you ever gone and they forgot to scan something in your cart at Costco or somewhere where they just do the scan and you get to the door or you're unloading. And I know that uh, my wife has done this uh, many times where we'll have something in the cart and they forgot to scan it. And we'll go out and start loading up like, oh, they never scanned whatever. And so she'll go back in and pay for it. And they're like, why would you come in? <laughs> you just got this for free. Be like, And it's because 
you know that God's watching. And um, so we'll see. Um, many years ago, I heard the acrostic for um, Bible, basic instru instructions before leaving earth. Yeah. And um, how are we using what God's given us? Just like the back of that seed packet has something showing, hey, this is how it's to you're to grow this and what it needs. The Bible has that for us as well, for how we're to grow as a Christian, what we need and what we don't need. And in John 15, verse 1, it says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. And so we see that we have a husbandman that has the seeds been planted, and that's where the first gift, the first uh, point here is. Um, the seed's been sown, and we've trusted Christ to save us. We've accepted what he's done and accepted that gift. And so the first point here is the gift of the Holy Spirit for point one. And um, in Acts 2, verse 38, says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Romans 5, 5 and he maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. And oh, I guess it was up there already. But uh, so we can see that there's a gift that's been given us, that seed's been planted, and now we have the Holy Spirit uh, living within us. And that's uh, point eight. The Holy Spirit is promised by Christ. And um, in John 14, 26, it says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. In Acts 2, 1, it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, there were with all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. And when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because every man heard them speaking in his own language. And we can see that um, we'll see the fruits of the Spirit, but there's also gifts of the Spirit. And, um, and when we get saved, God gives us each gifts. And he may give you more uh, later on. But uh, God uh, enables us to do things when we get saved that we maybe never thought before. For years, I said, I can't stand up in front of people. I can't teach. I can't preach. I can't do any of that. And that was my excuse for doing different things and why I wasn't doing things. But God gave me, um, basically, I had to step out in faith and say, you know what, I'm not going to let my fear stop me. This is the direction you want me to go. This is where I'm going to be. And then um, a lot of times we'll run from God's direction in our lives, and then we'll run into something, and then when we get there, they say, hey, you need to do this. And it's basically your employer telling you to do something that you were always afraid of, so you had to do it anyway. Uh, maybe speaking in front of people. And uh, as you continue to read through Acts there, you can see more of, the get, of what was going on there. And when the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost came upon them, and um, in Acts chapter 2 and verse 41, um, we see that when they gladly received the word, they were baptized, and the same day there was added to them about 3,000 souls. And um, so we can see that as the Holy Spirit works in our lives that we'll see changes and start doing things. And, and uh, when we have been promised that, we see that it's coming. A lot of the Old Testament, they were looking forward to that promise. And we have that promise given to us that we can uh, see and read that uh, they never had. And uh, all we have to do is accept, repent, and believe what Christ has done on the cross. And uh, the next point here is um, the Holy Spirit is received at salvation. And John 3, verse 5 says, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. 1 Corinthians six nineteen says, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, ye are, and ye are not your own? 
for ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So we see that the Holy Spirit is received at salvation. And um, I don't know about you. Have you ever been doing something and God just brings a passage of scripture to your mind? And as you're maybe making a decision or about to say something, God's like, answer not a fool. Answer a fool. And be like, but I had something really good to say. And God's like, don't. <laughs> and, uh, and you're like man and then there's other times someone will say something and be like and God says now answer but this is how I want you to answer or this is the decision that I want you to make or that verse of scripture comes up and saying this do that this is the thought process this is the principle of where you should be and um And how we can hinder that, we'll see later on that there's different things that we can do that will hinder that or, or, or stop that. So we see um, that the Holy Spirit is received as salvation. And next we'll see that the Holy Spirit is the seal of our salvation. In Ephesians 1.13 it says, In whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, whom also after that ye believed ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And John 6, 27 says, Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. And if you remember back in the Old Testament, they had to bring that perfect sacrifice, right? And they had to go through an inspection process. And much like when you go to the grocery store today or you buy anything, what does it say? Inspected or the USDA grade A or this seal. And you're looking for that seal to make sure it's of that quality. And when we get saved, the Holy Spirit stamps and says, you've been sealed. You have that, that mark of approval. And, um, and so we see that we have that seal at, at our salvation. And I uh, saw that in those verses there. Um, and next we're going to see is the growth in the Holy Spirit. Uh, just as we uh, plant flowers or plant fruits and vegetables or have that tree um, there's different things that have to go into the growing process the kids uh becca had brought home some seeds one time and a little you put it in paper towel with water and you stick it in and it starts to grow but you know what happens when you leave it in that paper towel for too long it starts, <laughs> it starts getting really funky smelling <laughs> you're like what is in this bag like oh that was our project from school be like yeah it was supposed to go in the dirt <laughs> and there's like we have we bought one of those little flower planter things we keep it up on our on our little balcony on our house and um every once in a while she'll plant something we planted some stuff in there in the basil and some other things and they actually started growing and then forget to water them and then they turn into brown sticks and uh but uh and in order for it to grow there's a process and there's things that need to be there but if we just plant the seed and we don't ever water it, we don't give it the nutrients we don't have the right soil it's never going to bring grow into what it needs to be right and if we don't watch it and and care for it and many times uh growing up my parents had a, a little garden a little it was probably as big as this room and uh they'd go out and pull weeds to keep it from destroying the other things and then uh my mom had flower beds and we decided to help her and she's like where'd all my flowers go we're like well we were pulling weeds she's like those weren't weeds but uh so you have to know what you're looking for too i guess but uh so there is a growth process and just as christians there's things that we need to do and have in our lives so that we can grow uh better and more effective for the Lord. So the first part of the growth process out of many, but we're gonna just look at a couple, is the growth is vital for avoiding fleshly living. So if we start entering into things that are gonna hinder the spirit, are we gonna grow like we need to be? No. Just like if we put that weed killer down in the vegetable garden, are the vegetables gonna grow? No. no. Or if uh, the Bible talks about the sowing the seed and then the tares were sown among it yeah. and uh just the how the the weeds can come up and those things and that are of the world or that god wants us to get rid of will hinder our growth and i've mentioned it several times uh years ago uh the lord was 
showing me some things. And for a period of time, he had me get rid of my TV. And I think when my wife and I were first married, I didn't have a TV and she's like, oh, I don't know anyone here. We don't, we only have one car, you're at work. I, I need a TV. <laughs> but, uh, uh, and there was that period of time when God said, you know what, this is a, a, a weed, this is a struggle in your life. I want you to remove it. And uh, that period of time came and went, obviously. But uh, growth is vital for avo avoiding fleshly living. As we grow closer to the Lord, we'll, we'll get further away from those things that we shouldn't have in our lives, or they won't be as much of a, uh, a hindrance to us. In Galatians 5, verse 16, it says, This I say, then walk in the Spirit, and it shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh, flesh lusteth after the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one to the other, so that they cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, of such like, of the which I tell you, you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So when we engage in those things or have those things in our lives, it's going to hinder our growth for the Lord. And as we spend more time in the Bible, studying the things of God at church, we're going to have less of a draw to go do that. Now, if you're in church, are you going to be able to go over and do these things over here? No, because you're in church, right? And um, so the people used to joke around with me, like, Dan, you spend more time at church than you do in the barracks or whatever, because uh, a single guy, I had nothing else to do, right? So it was like, hey, we're going to go soul winning for the military. So we drive all the way here, and then we meet, and then we drive all the way back to the base. And then because I have got people on, I drive all the way back to church, and then I drive all the way back and go to work. And it'd be like 100 miles for soul winning. I'm like, man. <laughs> But uh, the Lord knew that's what I needed, and it was all day Sunday, Saturday, Thursday, and just different things. And the Lord was teaching me things and growing me, and I wasn't allowed, not allowed, but I wasn't there to be drawn into these things. People will stop asking me, hey, Dan, you want to go to this party? And I'd be like, no, I have church in the morning. Or, hey, you come to church first. And they're like, I'm not going to church. <laughs> and after a while, they stop asking you. And it was, God was growing me and showing me things and what I needed to have in my life and where I needed to be. And so the next part of that is we stay away from those things by being in the word of God, by following after the Lord and following his direction. And the next thing is growth is the evidence of our salvation. So as we begin to grow, we'll see that we'll have a greater desire. When I first joined the military, I was running from God. That's the furthest thing that I wanted to be. And do you know what happened? Family came and brought me to church. Then friends and family came and brought me to church. And it was then that the Lord was like, this isn't bad, is it? This is your walk. And the God gave me, my desire was growing to be with the Lord. I saw what people were doing on their time. And I was like, do you know what? I don't want to be part of that. People losing rank, doing different things. Um, young and stupid, right? And, uh, and I didn't want to be a part of that. I didn't want to fall into that hindrance. My dad told me when I joined the military, he's like, you're gonna, there's one of three things you're going to become. You're going to become an alcoholic, you're going to become a fitness nut, or you become religious. <laughs> so so that's, there might be some variations in there, but, uh, <laughs> but obviously I became religious because you can see my physique. <laughs> it's not much there. I was joking with uh, this morning saying you can always, uh, I had a preacher tell me years ago, he's like, you can always tell when a preacher's on the level because the bubble's in the middle. <laughs> but uh, I guess I'm getting there. But... Uh, <laughs> But the, there's evidences of our salvation. Our, as the Lord begins to work in our lives, the things that are important to others, God said that's not that important. This is what where the true important lies. And it's not to seek after these things. And if you seek after me, I'm going to take care of you. You're going to have these needs met. And uh, I remember, I think I missed maybe a handful of Sundays in four years because no one wants duty on the weekend. And be like... 
or on a Friday night, you're like, <laughs> so, hey, I'll take your Sunday duty if you take my Friday duty. I was like, okay. Yeah. Or just the uh, Lord gave favor in different areas. But so we see that there's evidence of our salvation in our lives as we begin to grow closer to the Lord. In Matthew 7, verse 15, it says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but innerly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Amen. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, I have, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Mm -hmm. Galatians 5.22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And as I was thinking about that, uh, many times I've read through that over and over, and uh, is it illegal to go out or drive under the influence of alcohol? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Is it illegal to just start fighting with people? Yeah. yeah. So that, like, we go through the, the lust of the flesh, a lot of that stuff there's actual laws against, like, hey, if you, get, if you do this, you're gonna get arrested or you're gonna get a ticket or whatever. But it, can you get arrested for loving somebody? I mean, if you do it in a weird way, maybe. <laughs> you're like, I love him so much, I stole this car for him. Be like, no, <laughs> that's not how it works. But if you if you're peaceful, would you get arrested? No, not usually. Not unless you're it's like a peaceful protest doing <laughs> done wrong. But if you're long suffering, if you're really patient with someone, you see these YouTube videos of different things where um, someone's just being really calm. And someone's just yelling at them, screaming at them, spit flying out of their mouth in their face, and they're just sitting there like, are you done? <laughs> You're like, man, I know people that would have like karate, or not karate, but like throat punched them or done something. But uh, there's no law against being peaceful, gentle, having faith. And, we'll, and as you start thinking about that, like, huh, I can see it's played out even in the world. And then uh, the next thing we'll look, look at, is growth is produced as we walk in the spirit the closer we walk with the lord the more we'll begin to grow and i can see that in my life the times that i've drawn closer to the lord and been seeking his his will and saying lord if this is your will i'm going to do it i can see that i've grown you mentioned that series the authority of the believer that was a big one for me and uh oftentimes we get stuck in a mental box like this is where you're at and for years I was stuck at like, hey, this is where you were when you stopped doing this. This is where you're at. This is, this is the level you can get to. And as I started reading that and started grasping what was the Bible was saying and just realized we're seated way up here. I don't have to let these things down here. And it was just for years the devil saying, you know what? This is where you're at. This is as high as you can go. And then the, the, the word of God was saying, you know what? This isn't as low as you go. This is where you start. And uh, you're way above all that. You only have to be uh, hindered if you're willing to let that hinder you. And it was just uh, good for me. In Galatians 5, 16, it says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. As we're walking with the Lord, and we met, I mentioned this a little bit ago, we're going to have less of a temptation to fall into those things, to do those things. And uh, people will see that in our lives and they'll stop asking and stop doing things. And every once in a while, someone might say, hey, how about, and you're like, you know what, no. And then if you explain it to them a couple of times, they don't want to hear it anymore and they stop asking. And uh, so uh, just start teaching the Bible to them if they keep asking you to do something you know is wrong and they'll stop asking you most of the time. Uh, Joshua 24, 15, and many of us have this maybe in our home somewhere. Uh, it's a lot of cross-stitch work that uh, you see in people's homes or just a plaque on the door. In Joshua 24, 15, it says, And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood 
or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So it comes down to a choice. Are you going to do this or are you going to do that? Are you going to follow God or are you going to do maybe what seems easy and, and do what everyone else is doing? And sometimes it comes with a little hardship or a little anxiety or whatever. But in the end, God says, now look back. See how much better you are for following my direction in this and this. And see where how where I brought you to. So the, the third point here is the goodness of the Holy Spirit. Many things, the only good things in our lives are the things that Christ has done for us. Amen. Where he's brought us through, what he's, what he's given to us, what he's shown us, what he's taught us. And this comes only by supernatural kind of growth. Um, and it not only helps us, but enables us to be a blessing to others instead of a burden. And um, so the first thing we're going to look at with this, with the goodness of the Holy Spirit, is the fact that his character is produced in you. Uh, many years ago, I heard it said, you'll become, I, I can tell you who you're going to become by who you're hanging around. Right. And um, we oftentimes hear you're the product of your environment. And unless you're willing to step out from that environment, you're never going to change. And uh, I can remember when the church first started doing RU and learning those principles and the different things. And they said one of the biggest things when they send people to uh, maybe this recovery program out of state is they're not allowed to move back to where they came from because they're going to get back in the same crowd. They're going to get the same influence, the same habits, and they're going to fall back into what they used to do. And many times when we start following the Lord and God said, you know what, I'm going to have you step away from this. I'm going to bring you here. And, um, and sometimes God may say, do you know what, I want you to move away from your family and friends and be here and help with this and do that. And it may not be because your family and friends were wrong, but it may be because God said, you know what, if you're with family and friends, you're not going to be doing this like I've called you to do or what I've asked you to do. And for many years, I've been praying like, Lord, why? Why would you have me two, three thousand miles from the closest family member? And then sometimes when I go back and visit, I'm not in church as much. I'm thinking, huh, maybe God knows that if I'm near family, what do you tend to do? Like, hey, the family needs help on this, so I'm going to go help them and not be there. And then be like, hey, family, if you want us to move there, you need to get in church more. That way we can be with you. <laughs> God's waiting on you for me to move there. I don't know if that's true, but it's a good get them in church that way. But uh, so we'll see that his character is produced in you. And uh, fruit is the outward appearance of what is happening on the inside. In Hebrews 13, 15, it says, By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Are you thankful? Are you, can you tell when someone's not being very thankful? They're like, you help them with something like, thank you. Or they're like, thank you. <laughs> You're like, okay, you can tell where their heart's at. And that's like, I'll be like, sorry. They'll be like, you can tell, like, they're not really truly sorry. And be like, don't say sorry unless you really mean it. But like, why aren't you saying sorry? Because I don't mean it. <laughs> but um, you can see where someone's heart at is by um, what is shown on the outside. Uh, I thought it was funny a couple, maybe a month or so ago, I was working with some coworkers and, uh, and they were had to do something I normally do because they didn't have any work, so they were doing some of my, yeah. my work for me while I was doing other stuff. And they're like, Dan, I don't understand why you don't swear doing this. They're like, I've never heard you swear or do this, and I can't stop because I don't like it. And he's like, I don't like doing this stuff. I don't know how you can be so happy. And it was just, I just kind of chuckled, like, <laughs> I never thought of it that way. But when you have... Uh, a different speech pattern when you have different thoughts I guess you handle things differently but I, I just thought it was funny that something I don't really broadcast or think but other people notice and as you're walking with the Lord people are going to notice things in your life that are different and how many times have you been doing something and maybe a co-worker or family member says hey I'm going through this what what does the Bible say and they can see something in your life or how do you how do you do this without doing this and this or not falling into this or going this way what makes you choose that and it gives you a chance to witness and um and it may be even something the lord brought you through and and you had a growth process through it 
and someone's going through something be like hey this is I went through a similar situation years ago and this is how the Lord got me through it and you can show them maybe a biblical principle uh, with that and um, so the next is his character is witnessed by those around you and kind of covered that a little bit with that last little rabbit trail but in Acts chapter 4 verse 13 it says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And uh, have you ever said something smart? You didn't realize that you said something smart. Maybe the Lord gave you a little insight into something. And someone was going through a situation, gave them some advice, and they're like, Wow, oh, I didn't know you were smart. And you're like, I'm not. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. But apparently it helped. Um, People can see the difference in our lives by the, our outward <laughs> actions, by maybe our speech, or maybe the, some of the decisions that we make, or maybe the fact that maybe there's a situation happening at work and you can gain advancement by sharing something about someone else that is uh, maybe a rumor or maybe just cut their character down. And God said, you know what? You don't need to do that. If the, the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord, right? And uh, if God wants you to get that promotion, then he'll, he'll make it happen or, or provide a way to do it. And many times we'll see that we get far further or far different result than we were even anticipating just because we decided to follow the Lord and make some decisions uh, that based on principles. And when people see that you make decisions based and you're consistent, they're like, do you know what? I can trust this person. When they say they're going to do something, they're going to do it because I've seen it time and time. I've seen that character trait play out in their lives. In uh, Matthew chapter 7, in verse 16, it says, You should know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? And then 720 says, Wherefore by their fruits you shall know them. And kind of in closing, in Galatians, we read through the fruits of the Spirit, or the fruit of the Spirit, and then we saw the works of the flesh. Where do we, what do people see in us? Do they see the works of the flesh or do they see the fruit of the spirit? And as we start going through this course of study over the next uh, month and a half or so, we'll see what the Bible has to say about these different things and what the, what is love and what does that mean? And uh, several weeks ago, last month or two, pastor or someone preached on love and just the different meanings of love and um and oftentimes we may think we know something and then we see it, we start studying out a little more and we'll see how God maybe shows us that, um, what, what the Bible really says and what that really means. And um, just as you go through this week, just examine your life, be like, what, what have, what's being shown in my life? Or maybe ask someone close to you that you trust and say, hey, what do you see in my life? Do you see any of these works of the flesh or do you see fruits of the spirit? Or maybe, like most of us, there's a little bit of both. And be like, how do I move from the works of the flesh to having more fruits of the Spirit? And um, I'm looking forward to this course of study to see what the Lord has for us and uh, where we're to go on this. And um, so uh, that's pretty much the lesson for this morning. And I'm trying to get a... a, a figure out how this is all going to work out with the timing and uh, not we're doing pretty good so uh, we'll go ahead and pray and then uh, there's some coffee and donuts and then we do have to tear the classroom down again set it so that it's ready for the school on Monday I guess and uh, so we'll just put up the chairs but this want to give everyone ample time to get to um, maybe choir or kids class or wherever it might be Heavenly Father we just thank you for this lesson this morning on who is the Holy Spirit and Lord, what things we can do to draw closer and things that are evident in our lives when we are walking with the Spirit. And Lord, I pray that you'd help us all to draw closer to you. Show us this week maybe areas that we can improve and areas that we can uh, just uh, clean up in our lives or or just continue to study out. Lord, we pray that you be with the, the services to follow. And Lord, we ask that you bring us all back safely next week. We ask this in your precious and holy name. Amen. Amen.
from another object. Yesterday, the Lord's insight.